I was so afraid of dying that I became halfway suicidal. That is comedian Bill Blank. I'm your host, Michael Malone, and this is Punched Up, a podcast about stand-up comedy that's, well, punched up. I was a late bloomer, you know, um, looking at me now, you wouldn't know it. Cause I, I look, I've always, since adulthood, I've always looked older than I was. When I started high school, I was barely five foot tall, barely a hundred pounds. Oh wow. I didn't have hair under my arms till I was 17. My friends, most of them were a lot further along than me in junior high. Right. So my first kiss was, um, it was seventh grade. Okay. I'm going to stop Bill right there because... I want you to think back. I want you to think about your first kiss. Do you remember where you were, how you felt, those, that anxiety, that uh, how is this going to go feeling? <laughs> were you grossed out? Did you, were you excited? I, I was excited. I was on a school bus. I know, I know. Romantic. And... um I had a crush on a girl, and we would sit in the back of the bus and chat on the way home. And one day, I just planted one on her. <laughs> Today, we're talking about our first kiss with comedian Bill Blank. There are these two girls um, that lived across the street from one of my friends. Um, the older sister was our age and the younger sister was a year or two younger. But back then, you know, it was, we, we talked about kissing like it was actual sex in a way. Right. When you're young, it is, it's, you yeah. know, when you're young, you have that feeling of, well, it's that taboo. The, the questions weren't, did you fuck her yet? The questions were, did you French her yet? <laughs> so have you guys Frenched yet? And you'd have a girlfriend for one day, two days, and you might French her, and then, you know, that's the end of it. Yeah. Um, so the older sister, she had Frenched several of my friends. <laughs> but I was, uh, but I was, I was so underdeveloped and I was so little, and she was, she was out of my league, like, to me. I didn't think, right. you know, she, she was bigger than I was. younger sister uh, also had you know Frenched a guy or two um, and she the younger sister was ugly as fuck like <laughs> uh, like snaggle teeth bright red hair and not the good looking redhead the the redhead where everything else is white you know the white eyelashes and the eyebrow just the invisible woman and freckles everywhere and, yeah. and like she just had these buttery snaggly teeth and <laughs> you could hear the <laughs> in her s's you know right. the, so i set my sights on her So, Bill puts things in motion. He starts dating the younger, more accessible little sister. The first day, she wrote my name on her shoes. That was also, that was the equivalent of being Facebook official. There's about four names that are fucking crossed out. There's just a bunch of scribbles all over the shoes, you know? You know, I'm putting on a, I'm putting on a good front, but I'm scared shitless. Right. You know? and Terrifying. And they're in the house, we, we go knock on the door, we got done playing baseball for the day or whatever, sun's starting to go down, you know, and um, go knock on the door, is, is Shannon home? So Bill is standing at her front door with all his friends and little brothers just waiting, 
waiting for this moment to go down. It's one of those life moments you look back on about like how I became a comedian, you know, how my life built up to this. Yeah. You know, I was showing off. You know, I, I was being funny. Like they're all, they're laughing, and I'm I'm walking up to the door. You know, I'm I'm playing it. I'm clowning around while I do it. Right. But inside, I'm just fucking. I want to scream. I want to like break out of my body and run away. I have I suffered from like ze- severe anxiety in those formidable years, like going into like uh, eighth grade that summer. I don't know if you've ever had like an anxiety attack, but I think most people that have, it kind of starts in your gut. Yeah. It's something you feel in your gut. And that made it so like I couldn't eat. Right. And I started thinking about all these different kinds of things, you know, things that I could have gotten in trouble for, things that, um, it was very irrational thoughts, like how weird it was that I see the world out of my face and not somebody else's face. Like, yeah. Like when you look at a person, you see their face, you know? Yeah. But I can't see my own face. I'm seeing what what my eyeballs see. And that weirded me out. (laughs) Right. And then it weirded me out that how maybe I could have been the kid next door instead of me. And what are the, what are the chances that I was me? And then I'm going to die. And like, and, and I mean, a hundred miles an hour, irrational thought after irrational thought, just mind racing constantly. And all I thought about was how scared I was to die. I'm so terrified of death. Right. And, um, eventually I was so afraid of dying that I became halfway suicidal. I don't know if you remember this or not in your life. I like to think everybody has it, but that moment when you realize you're going to die someday and there's nothing you can fucking do about it, that had me bedridden for a month. Bill said that after he had this realization that he just felt like he would rather die than to live in fear of death. I, you know, I, I my mom got me into therapy and stuff and you know, different things, but there'd be for about a year, probably there'd be a trigger every once in a while that would freak me out. Yeah. And, uh, like I remember in eighth grade, our government teacher said throughout some stat one day that three out of three out of 10 teenagers contemplate suicide. That number, by the way, has increased by 17% since 2011. I I had freaked out about that for a few days and uh, my therapist was like, yeah, he he goes, that's true, but um, they also, those three also don't seek help. They don't go to therapy. They They don't reach out, yeah. Yeah, and he goes, so the fact that you're here, that puts you in that seven. Uh, Were there, were your friends experiencing that? Were your friends dealing with that? Or were you, did you feel isolated? I I felt totally isolated. Yeah, nobody else was thinking. Well, and I couldn't talk about it to them you know i was 13 we're dudes yeah like that's weakness yeah you don't show weakness to, to those guys that's the i mean even your best friends at that age they pounce on weakness oh yeah you know so everybody just thought i was sick i know i know some people have horrible Horrible mental illness, whatever it is, depression, anxiety, you know, where it, it, it's crippling. And trust me, I've felt that. I've been there. But there's a lot of overdiagnosis in the fact that we're in this place in society where everything has to be okay. Right, yeah. It's not okay. Like, w- when did it stop being okay to be weird? <laughs> right. Or, you know, like, why yeah. can't you just say, yeah, that's weird. But whatever. Because people are so quick to get offended by even saying that, oh, that's a little weird. They're like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. It's like you have to have this acceptance. How come you can't just, how come the acceptance can't be the acceptance of weird? Why not? I'm fucking different. Yeah. I like it. 
I like being different than everybody else. I want to be run of the mill fucking guy. Right. I like that. Embrace my difference. Embrace my weirdness. And, yeah. And we're good. But you can't even do that. You can't have that label anymore. You know. And so I think. I think that a lot of mental anxiety, especially, um, it can be used as a tool. It doesn't have to be a disability. It can be a strength. Right. If you package it the right way, you know, the, the anxiety, the crippling anxiety that, that I went through at that young age, I went through it because of how deeply I was thinking how outside of every fucking thing I'd ever heard in my life where my brain was going. And that was scary. Yeah. Um, I thought something's wrong with me. Why am I having these thoughts? There's something wrong. No, man, <laughs> I'm just fucking a deeper dude than, than yeah. the people around me. What I did was I took a competitive approach to it. Um, when I felt it coming, I would just say, I would talk to it like it was an actual concrete thing, like it was an opponent. Okay. Like it was a person standing across from me and I would just be like, they would always say, you know, that cliche, you take the bull by the horns with it, you know? Yeah. I would feel it coming and I would go, all right, motherfucker. Like, be like you're not going to beat me. You're not going to decide how I live my life. You're not going to rule me. The other thing was when I was 21, I started doing stand up. And I can say for certain, since the day I started doing stand up, I have never had an anxiety attack. It's like a vaccine. Right. You know, you inject a little bit of the flu into somebody and then they don't get the and flu. And then they don't get the flu, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, the little bits of anxiety, the little bits of highs and lows I get from stand up, it's like my anxiety vaccine. Almost hit a deer on the interstate. Have you ever almost hit a deer at night? Is it not worse than actually hitting a fucking deer? Right, whole rest of your trip, everything's a goddamn deer. You start getting pissed off about normal shit, you know? Who puts a mailbox right next to the road? Why would you even do that? Flags up, it looks like antlers, you're an asshole, sir. <laughs> My car's on its last leg anyway, it's making noises and shit. And I was just getting ready to start cursing my car, but I stopped because it might be listening. <laughs> Cause cars are like women, man. You can say whatever you want when they're not around, but you gotta be really careful what you say when you're inside them. <laughs> okay, so we left off with Bill and all his friends and little brothers and Almost like a Sandlot gang hanging outside the door, waiting for the little sister to come outside. So finally they come out and uh, we go up to the school and we're, we're faced off like it's about to go down. And I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. Right. So I go in, I go in for the kill and... I just pucker my lips up like I'm kissing my mom goodnight, you know? Like, that was a kiss. I didn't know. And this girl fucking devours my whole mouth. Like, just encapsulates my entire mouth. And she's opening her mouth, and I'm like, oh, and I start opening mine, and she's sloshing her tongue around, and it, it was the most disgusting fucking thing I had ever experienced. My, my face is shiny now. Like, the sun is <laughs> glistening around my... It's like I put on too much Carmex or something. Yeah. Like there's just shit everywhere. It, I was completely grossed out. I thought it was disgusting. I couldn't believe this is what fucking people were bragging about. My buddies are, like, high-fiving me and shit, and everything's awesome. But in my head, I was so... 
just mortified and grossed out. You know, the next day she crossed my name off her shoes, so I guess the joke was on me. <laughs> I'm like, not only did I French this f- fucking vulture, yeah. she dumped me. Right. <laughs> 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 Do you ever see the? Do you ever see the sisters? You no, ever, thank God. <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, I did once. Uh, shortly, I want to say I was nineteen or twenty. Yeah, and I was going to this bar all the time that I could get into. Well, the older sister was there. By this time, she was a monster. <laughs> so I run into her at this bar I get hammered I think you know how the story goes One thing leads to another Well, rather, one beer leads to another And Bill ends up back at her apartment Sinks full of dirty dishes It smells I see a couple of roaches run across the floor <laughs> The little sister lived with her No! She's like, hey, you remember, you remember Billy? You remember all those guys and blah, blah, blah. And sister looked, uh, yeah, I remember, you know, it was, <laughs> it was the same. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, fuck it, man. I'm getting laid. I don't care. Yeah, see the deal. Yeah. I mean, this is for my youth. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is for the man I used to be. Yeah. This is me. This isn't for me. This is me shutting a door on a problem. <laughs> yeah. this, is for, this is for 13 year old me, 12 year old me. So we get to Target, walking through the parking lot, she looks up at me, totally serious. Like, honey, did you lock the doors? <laughs> no, I didn't lock the doors. I grew up in a poor neighborhood. You don't lock your doors. What, so they break a window and find out there ain't shit in there? <laughs> And open it up and find out there's nothing in there. It's a lot less expensive that way. You don't gotta drive around with duct tape and plastic on your shit for two weeks by saving the deductible. It's humiliating. <laughs> Who wants to open their door in the McDonald's drive-thru? You look like a dickhead. And it's still totally serious. Like, I didn't even say anything. She's like, put my books in there. Are you kidding me? Think your book's gonna be all right, honey? I think that's the one thing that's probably gonna be all right. You know? you know, growing up the way that I grew up and watching all those criminal investigation shows you made me watch all the time, one thing I deduced from all that, thieves, not big readers. I know what got them there in their lives. <laughs> Lack of reading. I want to thank my guest today, comedian Bill Blank. Also, a special shout out goes to Ross Peterson over at KXNO Radio in Des Moines. It's actually where Bill and I got to sit down and record this, uh, <laughs> this great episode. I, I just love chatting with Bill. Uh, you can check him out at billblank.com. Uh, check us out on iTunes. You can check us out on Twitter at punchedupodcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for listening. Punched Up is a Glass Hammer production, created and hosted by Michael Malone. The clips you heard of the guest are all released and licensed through them personally. The music you heard is a mixture from Incompetech.com and PremiumBeats.com, the best place to find what you need for your next video audio project. Other clips are licensed through YouTube or our public domain. This episode was mixed by James Warburton Music. Find out more? Visit us online at punchedup.com.